Hey everyone, this is Bill from Driven to Distraction. Uh, here's a brief, approximately 14,000 mile review on my Jeep JLUR, in other words, Jeep um, Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon. So here goes. Um, a lot of this review is going to be what it's like to cope with owning an FCA product. Um, if you own a Jeep or any other FCA product, you know what I mean. Especially first model year, um, you're going to deal with a lot of stuff. And that's what I've been dealing with on this. So uh, I do like the Jeep a lot. Um, I am thinking of trading it because of some of the problems I've had. But um, it's going to be kind of a little bit of a process to do that. And I'll explain why as we go along. So let's do this. Anyway, uh, I don't really have too many mods, but I did have a factory winch put on here. Uh, and also the factory roof racks, as you can see kind of on the top. Um, the main problem with the roof rack is that as you start to drive with it for a few miles, you'll notice a few problems with whistling. And I've been on the forums and some folks and I discovered that right here, is where the problem lies. Actually, all the way across the crossbar on both sides. Um, there's actually some space there and it catches the wind and whistles. So for a brand new factory OEM product to have that problem, uh, just shows some poor engineering on uh, Mopar's part. So a lot of us took care of it by putting either a vinyl decal or for me, just some cheap Gorilla Tape there. Uh, it's pretty much weatherproof. It's held up well and it stopped the whistling. So that's the first problem of uh, dealing with driving this thing every day. Uh, as you can tell, it's pretty dirty, um, at least mildly dirty. Um, took it off-road this morning with my six-year-old, and I did some hiking later on in the day with my brother-in-law. So it's a little bit messy, um, but it does clean up really well, uh, and it looks really good, as you've probably seen from some of the uh, promotional videos and other reviews. Um, this is kind of a roundabout way of saying it does look good. People compliment it. Uh, but on the outside, um, you know, it can get messy, you can clean it up, you can definitely use it as a daily driver in that regard. Uh, you can see just the GoPro mount that I've been using uh, suctioned there, that works pretty well. Um, as we get around to this end, uh, I'm kind of stopping to show you some of the issues I've had, and then I will eventually get to some of the positives. Um, here you can see the marker light. Um, there's no problem with it now, but within the first five, six hundred miles of ownership, had this about eight months now um, there was a uh, condensation in there so I had that replaced under warranty uh, but that was the first of many problems I've had with the Jeep so far uh, so right there you have some condensation issues they swapped it out no problem and uh, it works fine now but you know it looks cool to have a marker light there except when it fills up with water um, come around this side you can see uh, the wide side or the driver side here um, no mechanical problems regarding the exterior otherwise, except for that marker light. Um, but there was definitely some problems in the back here. Um, if we open it up, you can see that the water and mud and stuff and salt has leaked in this winter. I had some major problems with the, the tailgate, so I guess you can call that exterior, but interior leaking. Um, the water can come down in here and also through the top. So I have re replacement glass on order after several uh, warranty repairs here, um, new weather stripping, and um, some adjustments to the tailgate itself. Uh, still leaks, and that's a minor problem compared to a rattle problem that I've had. Um, rattles and rattles and rattles when driving maybe 20 miles an hour or less, uh, enough to even have the um, you know the shop foreman where I've been bringing it say wow that's crazy I can't believe you deal with that so I've had two different dealerships look at it and um, no real luck with it again new glass on order drive me crazy but just found from a forum uh, post this week that if you put in bulb grease in this crevice here it's supposed to fix it and you know what after riding around with a big block of wood jammed in here and Gorilla Tape and everything trying to keep it isolated, trying to keep it insulated from shaking, for some reason $5 worth of bulb grease cleared her right up. No rattle. Still a bit of a leak. We're working on that. But man, has that rattle stopped. Thank God, because that was driving me crazy. If I open this up again, you can see in here, um, under the Husky Liner, uh, some recovery gear. 
I usually have this thing jam-packed with some other things like spare clothes, etc, etc. But because of the leak, um, a lot of water got in and it was like a kind of like a swimming pool in here. Uh, luckily, you can take this tub out. There's a drain underneath. Pretty cool if you want to store stuff like uh, some, use almost like a cooler. But um, not so cool if you want to keep stuff in here that's going to keep you warm and dry. So it's kind of a stripped down version of semi recovery gear, um, mainly because of that water. So hopefully this leak issue will get taken care of and it won't be a problem anymore. So let's close that up for now. I'll tell you about a few more things. Then we'll get to the positives, I promise. Um, if you, uh, oh, one last thing on the exterior. I did have it um, ceramic coated with OptiCoat Pro Plus. I'll do another review on that at some point, but I can just tell you that a lot of this mud and stuff with a little bit of water and a little bit of uh, ONR um, cleaner or even just spraying it off with a power washer, it's gonna look good as new. It does clean up really, really well thanks to that coating. Let's get inside really quick. I'll show you kind of how I set things up. In the back, these Molly attachment points are great. Um, I have some emergency stuff, some um, extra supplies, things like that. And there's definitely storage underneath. So you can see under here, this is where the important bathroom issue stuff goes, but there's also um, an air compressor, some shopping bags, some other things under here, a tarp, etc. Uh, good to have. Some spare electronics like cables, chargers, batteries in here. Um, if you follow my other channel, Moe Martial Arts, you know that I'm a bit of a prepper, not on the level of some people, but if I'm going to have an off-roader and I'm going to drive every day, I want to be able to get my family out of any bad situations and be ready for that. So we have some fun toys in here for my son, but we also have walkie-talkies and just some hiking gear, sun, uh, sunblock, bug spray, stuff like that in here, extra food barf bag just in case the food doesn't work out, flashlights, etc. Uh, you can probably tell the interior is pretty nice on this thing. I think most people have commented on that in their reviews and such. Um, but you know, gloves and flashlights, essential stuff you'd have find in any Jeep. Tool bag underneath here. The uh, glove box is a bit small, but it holds what I need in there. And this is kind of cool up here. Uh, if you have all of this stuff, uh, the Molly attachments, you can slide onto here, Zulu nylon gear. You can have a knife and some pens, etc. Uh, Seatbelt cutter, things like that. Um, over here, um, here comes another complaint or issue I'm dealing with. Um, inside the console, there is a USB port. And right now I have an old iPod hooked up to it. I used to like to put my iPhone in there, but uh, the USB 2 would not work with CarPlay. It was pretty intermittent. Um, and in fact, it made the stereo act so buggy that they replaced the stereo under warranty. That's the seven inch screen, no navigation. So obviously you want your CarPlay to work. Um, I was having some issues with the USB port one as well. Uh, when they swapped the stereo, the USB port one worked again, but USB two port never quite worked. So I use it for power. Um, mainly I use it for the sync for the iPod, just in case uh, you need a little redundancy in your music and entertainment. Um, and that sense resolved the issue. Uh, but I have this cable here to use my iPhone in this really cool Rugged Ridge um, GoPro and iPhone holder. So while I didn't really like having the phone out and the cable out, um, you know, because obviously people might be attracted to that if they're walking past the Jeep, and it's kind of annoying to look at it um, when you have a perfectly good place to put it here, um, it seems to be doing the trick. So I've come to terms with that. See the double storage here for some hand grip training. Um, and you know, your other Rubicon type stuff, the off-road goodies. I'm not getting into that now because there's a million other reviews about that. And I think a lot of other people will talk about it better than me. Um, let's get back down around to the driver's side here. I'll go quickly. Um, sitting in here, again, you could tell this is going to be a great daily driver. Um, you can tell that, uh, they put a lot of thought into making it comfortable, and this Jeep is really better than any other Jeep I've been in. No death wobble for me. Um, it rides great, stays comfy, not too, too loud on the road, um, except for that rattling issue. But like I was saying earlier, um, there were some other mechanical issues. In my case, I didn't have four-wheel drive for the first six months of owning this Jeep. Um, they adjusted the transfer case a few times. They ultimately replaced it, but um, this... Uh, manual transfer case shifter would never stay engaged it would pop out and uh, it happened to me a few times off-roading 
and it happened to me you know just trying it out testing it on just on regular streets and um, it proved to be pretty dangerous so it's been taken care of it works great now uh, I can use my four-wheel drive I can use my um, you know my diff lockers and my sway bar disconnect and all that stuff a-okay but uh, for a while there, it kind of I traded out, I traded out an FJ Cruiser for this, and you know the Toyota reliability was there. Uh, and the great irony of trading one off-roader for another was that I had to stop off-roading for a while. My son and I enjoyed going every weekend. So uh, we're getting back into it now, and everything seems to be working mechanically. But it makes me wonder about long-term reliability, especially um, you know given transmission other drivetrain issues that might pop up. We'll see. But you could tell it's a roomy cabin. It's comfy. It's enjoyable to drive um, when it's warm out. Right now it's just turned March, so it's not super warm out here in Connecticut. Uh, but when it's warm out, it's great to take the top off, drive around with the family, come to and from work. I'm in the car about two hours a day. Um, the seat's really comfortable. Excellent commuter. You know, if you plan on going off-road for the weekends and if you don't mind a somewhat louder and somewhat bumpier drive than your average uh, vehicle. Uh, it is still a Jeep after all. But it's pretty nice, and I would recommend it, except, again, the mechanicals and the other issues. So, um, you know, if you're willing to deal with that type of stuff, go for it. It doesn't get much better than this. Um, I don't know yet if I am going to be the type of guy that's going to deal with that. So we'll see. But um, right now, that's the Jeep. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, again, Bill with Driven to Distraction. Check out our blog and website when you get a chance. And, um, you know, we're a new channel. We're just getting started. So any likes or subscriptions are also great. We put some footage about the Jeep, about some off-road adventures, and um, definitely some uh, kind of a different take on car reviews. Um, less about horsepower and, spe um, you know, grip and things like that. Less about specs and way more about what it's like to actually drive these vehicles um, in the short and long term. What are first impressions like? What do we enjoy doing with our cars and with our trucks and with our SUVs? So that's what we're all about. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.